the Snyder Cut was released. You remember back in 2017 when fans everywhere revolted? And then this whole grassroots movement formed online, hashtag release the Snyder Cut. That's because the movie was terrible. A fragmented story that sort of just fell flat with poorly timed and awkward humor. It was like two different stories battling in and out. In fact, that's kind of exactly what it was. It was two different egos of directors fighting for prominence. Partway through filming, Zack Snyder stepped down as director due to a family tragedy. But then Joss Whedon was brought in to finish the project, and he ordered a whole bunch of reshoots, including the whole mustache removal fiasco. And it just didn't work because it lacked a consistent tone and an overarching picture. But four years later, Zack Snyder was finally able to realize his vision for the DCEU in this brand new movie. And yes, it plays like a brand new movie. It's a new experience. It's an interesting concept, even if the execution is a bit flawed. Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed this far more than I enjoyed the Justice League. But by God, is it long. This movie doesn't feel like a movie. It feels like a cross between something that should have been a TV series and an open world video game for the audience to explore, where the plot isn't shoveled to the audience. This is both good and bad, because this is everything that I've always hoped that DC TV would be, except we ended up with things like Titans. So hopefully they'll put their time and money into that, because most of the DC projects right now are crap. This cut did a much better job of evoking the audience's empathy towards the characters, with the inclusion of backstory to actually make sense of who the characters are and the looming threat. We saw more of Cyborg. His personal journey and internal battle not only make him one of the most interesting characters, but also the heart of the entire film as he struggles to comprehend his new abilities and somehow retain his humanity. We see his tumultuous relationship with his father and the absolutely devastating loss of his mother, and we have a connection to him in something other than just the mother boxes. Plus, we have a much better introduction to the Flash. He felt like he actually had a purpose, like he actually belonged. He wasn't there to just funnel people out of danger. Even if he does feel a little more Wally West than he does Barry Allen. But the new cool introduction to The Flash and to Iris West is beautiful, even if it is a little bit creepy just for a moment. But there's also more Aquaman and his interactions with fellow Atlanteans. Plus, there's a lot less of that awkward forced humor, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. Diana even had an extended appearance and the chance to learn more about her culture. Plus, we got to see more of the Amazons and their history. Oh, and Alfred. We finally got Alfred. Oh, did I miss him. Plus, he's got all of the sass that the comic Alfred has. But the biggest change might come in understanding more about Steppenwolf by making his motivations more clear in his need to prove himself and redeem himself to Darkseid. And yeah, Darkseid actually makes an appearance instead of being conspicuously missing. I loved the epic battle that brought the world together to defeat Darkseid. We got to see the old gods with the Amazons and the Atlanteans along with men. It felt very Lord of the Rings. Then again, so did the very dragging Return of the King ending, too. But we also got to see Green Lanterns in that first battle against Darkseid. So why weren't they present in the rest of the story? We didn't need to have Hal Jordan. What about Jon Stewart? Hell, I would have even settled for Guy Gardner. But the Green Lanterns are like this massive intergalactic police force of sorts. And if this is such a catastrophic, apocalyptic event, I'm pretty sure they would be involved. Remember how I said this was a four-hour movie? Four hours is too long for a movie. 
Most people probably had to take a break, or even two, but I just sat and powered through the entire monster in one go. This film is a director's cut, so it has everything. And boy, did it feel like it. This movie is split into six parts, plus an epilogue. Pretty much it's bloated with unnecessary tonal aesthetics and subplots that don't and won't pay off. Like Lois drinking coffee and watching the rain. Or Arthur drinking whiskey in a storm, which admittedly is kind of cool, but doesn't actually need to be there. And Alfred teaching Diana how to make tea. Or Martian Manhunter sitting out on the sidelines. Why isn't he offering to help with this apocalyptic big bad? And how does Bruce not already know about him? He's the greatest detective in the world and he found everybody else, so how does he not know about John? The film, if fleshed out a little more, could easily be several films, and it probably should be. See, here's the problem. When The Justice League was originally made in 2017, we only had two origin stories so far. Superman and Wonder Woman. And if DC wanted to create this epic universe to rival the Marvel Cinematic Universe, then they definitely went about this wrong. This film is so long and plodding because it tries to introduce so many characters and make them relevant to not only the plot, but also the audience. We learn not only about Cyborg, but The Flash and Aquaman and even a bit more about Batman. If they had introduced the characters in their own origin stories, in their own films, we could have cut down on so much of the excess backstory that just made this feel so long. And yeah, the backstory is relevant, but it shouldn't be present in this ensemble film. Bruce Wayne could have been set up to be what Tony Stark was for the Marvel Universe. There's so much to love about this cut. Like, not only the fight scenes being epically better, but it's also missing all that really awkward, cringy humor that Joss Whedon had inserted. As I said before, it has a more consistent tone. And it even still has humor. It's just not the same quick, quirky Joss Whedon tone humor. It's subtle. But also, the coloring wasn't so weird, and the CGI was better. It wasn't perfect, but it was much better. The entire film carries this theme of loss and starting over for all of the characters. And them failing and then coming together as a team. This film, as long and plodding as it is, feels like a complete thought. And not so much of a disjointed mess as it was. But it still is a mess. It's overlapping ideas and plot lines that could have been whittled down. If you're a casual movie lover looking for something to watch Saturday evening, this is definitely not the movie for you. But if you're a fan, you're gonna love this movie. I just don't suggest watching it in one go. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Wonder Woman. What do you think, man? You think she'd ever go for a younger guy? She's 5,000 years old, Barry. Every guy's a younger guy.